Let's get this game underway. Ooh, this beautiful terrain set. We have Tassa in the bottom corner on equal footing. Most equal of equal maps. And he spotted a hunt, and this is far away. And he's playing Egypt, so really classic old matchup. And oh my god, both these players finding they're they're they could spit to the other uh, player's hunt. Oh man, and this is gonna be really really good for EKA, who's actually gonna go on a barracks to begin with. Um, but I want to mention that both these players are are very good. They are uh, well known in the community, and I expect this to be a really good match. Um, Toss is actually going for hunting dogs, so he will have nothing against the aggression that EKA is going to be putting on soon. It's making me worried. Making me slightly worried, although... These villagers are, are, are literally running half the map just to go to the, the hunt. Um, so that that might slow EK down a little bit, but, but not too, too much. Yeah, both of them, like, I'm assuming this is a hunt for Tassa that he has not found yet. And here's another hunt. Um, you're on equal footing. There's, there's always a hunt behind your base. Not always, but, like, majority of the time there's a hunt behind your base. Oh. Yeah. And so the first spearman comes out. Um, yeah, usually it's a hunt behind your base. So if you want to be conservative and if you want to go on like stone early on, and, uh, commit to the greed, you ideally should try to find that hunt in the back of your base. But in the meantime, I think CK just happy to push with only one spearman. I think he is. I think he's going to get the desired result with only one spearman too. Um, stop at some gathering time, but yeah, once he brings up this other spearman and the third spearman that just got created, he could actually put some good economic damage on Tulsa right here, but... We're going to see, he's coming in with a force. He's going to knock off Tulsa from this hunt. Yeah, the villagers almost fought back, but uh, not anymore. So he's going to spend some time taking out the scout and eventually the storehouse too but that means that toss is going to be in the second age much ahead of uh ek who's now putting down a barracks and can do so without having to make spearmen so that is a slight plus but this is quite a lot of spearmen here from ek he could easily come here easily deny this barracks um and at least for the time being, since Tossa didn't go for an early early second town center, it's not like he's taken an economic advantage for doing so. Uh, for, like, delaying his barracks. And this is a, a mighty four, six, now five uh, spearmen. And great work from Tossa. He's focusing down the, the hurt spearmen. But uh, a lot of lost gathering time fumbling of resources and now EKA who's gathering stone is going to the second age so uh, put on enough of a pressure where EKA is sort of on the back foot here I I like this uh, sorry Toss is on the back foot and he's housed so he won't even be able to make builders in a couple seconds from now and EKA even behind this is just gathering up stone gathering up wood And paroling the map, patrolling the map with uh, a couple spearmen. Only now is Tossa getting some villagers on stone, now making some axemen. Um, but everything is pretty much protected in Tossa's base. It's nothing to worry about right now. Mm. Bit laggy. I'm gonna resign. Okay, in the meantime, yeah, Spearman of EK just doing the rounds, seeing if there's any exposed villagers, 
and look at this goes for a really forward second town center knowing that he has map control doing the full loop around his opponent's base he knows that there's no funny business going on and he's gonna have uh, a pretty sizable economic advantage in the next couple of minutes until Tossa can drop down a second town center of his own like this moving out with some of his hacksmen to secure some more resources around his base there wasn't a hunt there wasn't a safe hunt in the back of his base so that's unfortunate uh, second production facility is going to be a take that back <laughs> it's gonna be a take that back also is not ready to commit yet to a second production facility and or a misclick EK is gonna see this but there's yeah more than enough Axemen here and he gets turned around the thing is Axemen are seven speed to the six of most infantry so he can just chase all of these spearmen back and he's gonna be comfortable doing so EK doesn't have like only has one Epaspis, doesn't have much else. Um, look at these villagers, just standing around, doing nothing. EK now producing double villagers, doing what he needs to do. 27 villagers to the 24. And with the double, with the TC fire, he's easily going to be able to clean this up. And what is this? Second town center going up for Tossa in the back of his base. This is going to be excellent for future market lines. And that stables is coming in. So maybe uh, slightly delayed from what he anticipated, but not too, too far behind. And with that, I think... Tossa has gotten out of the thick of the issue, right? Um, with his second town center up, it's now just all about macroing hard to, to make up the advantage, make up for the disadvantage in the early game, but it's nothing that he can't do. And with the uh, EKA being spread around all across the map, it's kind of, uh, it's, it would be hard for, for him to defend any raids. So he almost needs to continuously be putting the pressure on. Scout's gonna come and see this. Scout's gonna see all of this actually. Um, armory going down. Like it, I like it. Another barracks going down for EKA. Uh, who's sitting on 38 villagers to the 33. So still a nice, nice villager advantage. Looks like he's struggling for gold to build. Only three people on gold. Nah, now putting a ton more on gold like it. And he's moving out, marching off across the side of the map with uh, a small raiding force. And EK is thinking about doing the same thing to defend this hunt, but... Uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to handle this. He should be able to hold this. And yeah, EK is going to have to turn around. This is not the fight he envisioned taking, unfortunately. And so he's, he's going to kite with his uh, Toxodes, but... Uh, all that chip damage now being healed up by Tossa. He's bringing in some Priests of Raw in the mix. And talk about fast those heal up. First armor upgrade as well coming through. Does EK have an armory at all? No, he does not. Just continue to produce Spearman and Toxodi out of uh, out of the two archer ranges and the two barracks. Um, also, was getting a little bit interested in pushing out. Just a tad interested. Decides against it after seeing a couple of Toxodes. The Siri is going to get a rude awakening soon by the camels. 
but at least EK will know what he's going to be fighting up against. Hey, we're good to see you. Tons of houses being dropped down for Tossa, who's still behind in terms of production. Um, sitting on two stables, only one barracks, with no conditioning. So EK has a does have an opportunity. Raise your toes. What? <laughs> I think in this next fight, though, the armory upgrades will reign supreme. Uh, as long as CK doesn't have too much of a force. Small raiding party here. This is a massive army here from EK. Easily should be able to clean up all of the uh, the axemen in the mix, but I'm, I'm liking more and more seeing Priests of Ra being used. Let's hope that this raid here does not make EK turn back. Because he has a golden opportunity. He's 30 pop ahead, right? And this is sort of the, the difference in philosophy. Do you go with uh, lots and lots of production? Or do you just go for the meat? Do you just go for more population and hope that that more population is better than uh, any armor upgrades you can hope to get? And I think the answer is becoming more and more clear, especially with Tasa's camels not being in the mix here. He thought that raid was going to distract EK, but it is not. There goes the army, 50 pop ahead, EK. Of course, there's, there's some nuisance in the back here, but uh, he's just going to march on. March on, and uh, Tasa is very worried about this, and rightfully so, dropping down a bunch of guard towers. There's some camels in the mix, but EK was not discouraged. Did not make a pass fist just because he had uh, his opponent had a lot of axemen. He continued to make spearmen, and I would have uh, I would have been an idiot and said that spearmen weren't going to make uh, make the cut with all those axemen. But I was wrong. Look at this. EK pushing in. The population of Tossa continues to fall. Uh, looks like he's gonna target the guard towers that are putting on sustained pressure on his on his Toxody, and uh, he will be able to get them down. So this is really smart of Tossa to, to stay in this game that way. Um, and EK going to age three. He's not worried. He's put enough pressure on uh, his opponent. Oh, and look at this. He actually does have two army upgrades. So really, really good. This is, a, this is a really strong army. As soon as he gets to H3, I'm sure we're going to see a bunch of Padromos coming out. Maybe some H3 armory upgrades. Um, but, yeah, really good. Oh, actually, of course, we got to get Tuxori Champion. Tuxori Champion will be will be very, very key. Uh, but he doesn't have the gold for that yet. Just going to be encircling Tossa's map. There's not much of the Tosses gathering outside of this uh, this little patch here. I don't even think... He's got this gold. He's got this gold in the back of his base, but this is it. This is this is where he is. This is where he's living. He's not, uh, he's not going with much else. 65 villagers to the 54. Weary. Oh, look. What the? How did EK get some villagers down here? Oh, he's going to make some siege workshops. Interesting. And while he's distracting Tasa with that, he's moving in with 45 Toxodi. And, of course, getting Padromos. Love, it. Love to see it. Toxodi champion in the mix. Padromos queuing up. Stop and shoot. And there go the villagers. Even more go down. 51 villagers now. And Tasa can't continue to garrison his, his villagers for too too long because he needs these resources so he's caught between a, a rock and a hard place and he doesn't have much here in the mix of uh, in, in terms of army count only 19 camel riders um, and I guess EK is maybe waiting for Tuxoyu champion that 10% health 10% damage but he's gonna stand and fight here at least for now hoping to get some some spearman champion here as a as a meat shield for all of these non-champion camel riders. 
Hello, hello from Argentina. Cool, cool. Oh, and look at this. EK switched to a really strong H3 Greek composition. Hoplites, Toxodi champion. Um, but Tasa, you know, still staying in this, right? Like The one benefit, the one downside of having such a, a massive pierce heavy, pierce damage heavy army is that you can't really push in and destroy buildings. Um, but it's not going to... That's not going to matter for long. We have rams coming up. We have lots of Perdromos scouring anywhere that Tossa could be potentially gathering resources from. Just being an absolute nuisance. 51 villagers to the 75. And battering rams are coming in. Massive army here. Uh, where's the rest of EKA's army? Where are all of his hoplites? I guess he just has a couple here. Six hoplites. Might not be enough of a meat shield, but... Tossa, I think he has a ton of slingers. Right? He's going to H3 himself. Nice walling this off. But here come the battering rams. <laughs> potentially on to the Temple of Set. Borg, man. I What language you see? <laughs> what language do you speak? <laughs> I don't understand a goddamn word you're saying. 180 pop of 180 for EKA, moving in with Padromos to protect against all of the Camel Riders. And on the other side, he's destroying the houses with the Hoplites. Oh, and it looks like these Battering Rams are going in for the right click on a TC, but that's going to be it. Tossa sees what's coming and uh, resigns, taps out. What are you guys saying, man? All right, let's check the, uh, the score here. Current villager production. Yeah, it was pretty even early on, but Tossa, he was greedy in the beginning, but didn't decide to gather stone. So he was greedy for without the benefit that you would usually get from being greedy, which I think put him back too much in the early game. Um, and EKA did a fantastic job of see here current military production yeah I did a fantastic job of um, massing up a large enough army where and taking fights at really opportune times 